charged with a very serious crime of premeditated murder of two persons. He is charged with the murder of Zimri, the son of Salu, an Israelite and leader of a Simeonite family, and Cosby, the daughter of Zur, a Midianite woman. The charge is that with premeditation, Pinchas did murder each of these two people. I am not at the end of the trial going to define murder for you in the jury instruction. That's going to be part of your decision. We have here today as our trial attorneys, we have Sidney Wexler, who is the prosecutor and who will act on behalf of the law to prosecute. We have Lord Glenn, who is the defense attorney. And we have Pinchas, son of Eliezer, son of Aaron the priest. Will you stand, please? <laughs> Thank you. 
victims of this crime. The defendant, Pinkas, was not at the time he slew the two people, a member of the Israelite armed forces engaged in a military conflict against enemy combatants. And neither of the murdered persons, Zimri or Cosby, had ever been charged with a crime before the elders of the tribe, nor convicted in a properly constituted court of law. No state mandate or ruling of any court of law has ever been issued authorizing the defendant Pinkas to cause the death of his fellow Israelite Zimri and Cosby, the Midianite girl. In addition, the defendant Pinkas has violated numerous laws of the Torah, including but not limited to the sixth commandment set forth in Exodus 20, which states, Lo tirzah, you shall not murder. Finally, the defendant Pinkas violated the basic principle of the sanctity of human life by taking of human lives unlawfully, as set forth in Genesis 9, where God, in addressing Noah, says, Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in his image did God create man. In the interest of conserving time, the state will attempt to prove the allegation of double murder by calling Pinkas to testify as a hostile witness, and we will rest our case solely on his admissions and testimony. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court, distinguished counsel, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the facts are not in dispute. It is the conclusion of the prosecution that is unsupportable. The documentation of the incident contained in this book, the Torah, clearly provides justification and mitigation for the actions of my client, Pincus, Ben Elazar, Ben Aharon HaKohen. The evidence and testimony presented today will show that the actions of the deceivers Zimmery and Cosby were so provocative and perverse that they deserve to die. The facts will show that while the Israelite people settled in Shittim, Balaam, king of Moab, hatched the plot along with the Midianites to destroy the Israelite people by having the daughters of Moab seduce the Israelite men to worship Baal and Lord. Hashem was angry at this and sent a plague against the Israelites that was killing thousands. Hashem told Moshe the only way to assuage his wrath was to hang the leaders in broad daylight. Moshe, the leader of the Israelites, Order that all Israelite men that were attached to the Baal the Lord to be put to death. Despite this clear pronunciation of judgment, the deceived Zimri, instead of seeking redemption and forgiveness, further inflamed the situation by mocking Moshe. The facts will show that Cosby was an enemy agent. A Matahari, if you will, of the Midianite people, a people bent on turning our Israelite brethren into Baal worshippers through the use of loose and desirable women of loose morals. <laughs> Cosby's perversity was matched by Zimri's treachery. The evidence will show that Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of the tribe of Simeon, disrespected Moshe and the decrees of Hashem by fornicating with Cosby in front of Moshe and the assembly in sight of, of the tent of meeting. Yes, Pinchas followed Zimri and Cosby into the tent of meeting. 
Yes, he took his spear. And while the decedents were in the middle of sexual perversion, he thrust it into their bellies, skewering them like they were shish kebab. <laughs> but it was not murder. In fact, the evidence will show that following the incident, Hashem ordered Moshe to harass and smite the Midianite people because of what Cosby had done. The evidence will also show that Hashem and Moshe rewarded Pinchas for his actions. After all the evidence has been presented, after testimony and the closing argument, you will have no choice but to find my client not guilty of murdering the decedents simply because.
thou shalt not murder. Yes, I'm familiar with that. When you struck your fellow Israelite Zimri and the Midianite girl, Cosby, did you fling the spear at them from a distance or were you up close to them? Up close and very personal. <laughs> <laughs> How close were you to them when you thrust the spear at them? Spear length. Yes. 
the order of the West is slightly up. All three hundred, all three thousand. And following the slaying of the three thousand, was Moshe or any of the Levites prosecuted? No. No one was prosecuted. You don't assume that you killed somebody. No. Prior to slaying them, did you receive any instructions from Moshe? Yes. And what were those instructions? God said to kill a man. And what was their understanding of that? Well, first remember, we lived in a theocracy, not a democracy. And all the men involved, we were supposed to kill them. That's what God said. That's what God told them to do. You know why that order was issued? Yes. And why was that order issued? God was that. Would it be fair to say that you understood the plague that was going on at the time was a punishment for God? Yes. Would it also be fair to say that you understood the order for the slain to be directly from God? Absolutely. I take it that Moshe didn't retract that order prior to the killing of the Sydney No, he didn't. Prior to the killing, did you know who Sydney was? Yes. Who was him? As stated before, he was a prince of the Sydney. So, what would that make sense? He was also a leader, one of the leaders of the uh, Israelites. Now, just prior to your entry to the meeting, what did you observe Simri and Cosby? Well, Simri brought Cosby to the tabernacle. They began to have sexual relations at the time of the meeting. Uh, everyone in the assembly was frozen.
and smite the Midianites to kill them for their conspiracy to convert the Israelite people. Did you uh, smite the Midianites as much as commanded? We did. What were the details of that? Well, after we have to read. We killed Baal, we killed thousands and thousands of people. We hunted them down like dogs. <laughs> we killed them in the streets, we killed them in the alleys. Was any prosecuted for the deaths of those videos? Absolutely not. Other than a prosecutor in this action, has anybody instituted, instituted any criminal actions against you as a result of the zealous actions you took against the Supreme Court? No. In fact, I get further favorable reviews in Psalms 106.30 and Joshua chapter 22.30. <laughs> <laughs>
tell the reasons why you are asking the jury to find the verdict in your favor. Uh, you may refer to the testimony from the stand, and you may refer to the facts that we have in the court. Thank you. Thank you. It is the position of the state that the defendant's own testimony of the intentional homicide has been given. As I was listening to the testimony of Pinkus, I tried to sum up his position and his effect on a society based on law and order. My conclusion is that based on his testimony, he is the original vigilante. He lives by his own rules. His actions are those of a zealot who take the law into their own hands. The Pinkus should print his own business cards, I suggest, to say no judge, no jury, no trial, no appeal, no state of execution, because I am the law. By impulsively shedding the blood of a fellow Israelite and a woman without benefit of either a trial or prior warning, Pinkus took the law into his own hand, thereby creating a dangerous precedent as to how the religious society based upon Torah can exist. He violated the rules and regulations of the priesthood by shedding blood and being in the presence of a dead person. He violated the concept of tzedek tirdof, justice, justice you shall pursue, because justice means legal process, judicial procedure, and a verdict handed down based upon justice. Now we cannot read the mind of this man in us, but I suggest that his testimony indicates that he was motivated by some selfish motive, maintaining that he alone was doing his thing for the sake of God when he was actually committing a homicide. The action of Pinkas goes far beyond the slaying of two people. His actions set the stage for the actions of a modern day Pinkas scenario. And I wish you would recall the case of James Cock an extremist fundamentalist who in 1998 fired a rifle and killed Dr. Barnett Slepian in upstate New York. Dr. Slepian, age 52 and the father of four, was an obstetrician gynecologist who provided women's medical services and who performed abortions at a local women's health clinic. James Cock's defense, similar to what we heard today, was that he could justifiably commit an act of violence against people whom he considered breaking the biblical law. He said his Bible taught him that abortion was a crime against God and that he believed that any force was justified to prevent abortions. Fortunately for the rest of us, James Cobb was found guilty and sentenced to 25 years in prison. Now you've listened to the testimony of Pinchas here today. Has he not convicted himself with a fundamentalist point of view that caused the death of Zimmer, a fellow Israelite, and caused him a mission on the earth. His actions were reckless and impulsive, and he deliberately, by his own words, took human life in all his training as a priest in Israel. His hereditary birthright, he forgot the essence of Torah. The facts are clear. And I ask you to restore Mishpat, or justice so that so clearly enunciated by our prophets. There is no justification for murder. Yes, there are weeds in our garden of the historical Torah, but let us not sanctify the weed that sweats the flowers in our tradition. We must stop the action of Pinchas now, and we must find Pinchas the priest guilty of murder. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Um, I'd like to say before the defense uh, has this five-minute uh, closing argument that I appreciate the uh, gravity of the charges. I appreciate the, the attention that's been given here. The reason we're having a trial is because this issue is one of great importance and has been one uh, of great comment and note uh, in our society. 
In my opening statement, I told you that the facts were not in dispute. I said it, that it is unsupportable to conclude that Pink has committed an act of murder and that the testimony would lead to no other conclusion and that Pinkus is not guilty of the crime he's been accused of because no crime was committed. The courts and Torah distinguish between various types of homicides. The traditional legal definition is that murder is the intentional killing of a human being by another human being with malice of ortho, i.e. an evil intent, without justification, mitigation, or excuse. In other words, homicides, such as in war, or state executions, are justified and therefore lawful. All other homicides being unlawful, that is, not justified, range from negligent homicide to manslaughter all the way to murder. We know from reading Torah that Hashem has killed. Remember the story of Noah, just to name one time? We uh, know that his, uh, Hashem's angels have killed. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? And even his prophets, such as Moshe, have killed and have ordered killings. Were any of them prosecuted? These were either done by decree of, Moshe, of Hashem, or certainly with Hashem's approval. And such killings were, by definition, justified and therefore lawful. As I will argue later, the killing of Zimri and Cosby were justified because of their provocative behavior. But this is not simply a case of blaming the victim. For the word victim has certain connotations. The word implies that Zimri and Cosby were innocent dupes. Far from it. They were active participants in their own Cosby was acting as an agent for the enemies of Israelites to turn them from Hashem. Zimri, her willing co-conspirator, her lover, brazenly and without shame, defied Moshe in the midst of the Hashem and fornicated in the most public and profane way possible in the tent of meeting moments with the specific intent to incite Hashem's anger and continue a plague that was killing thousands. Cosby was committing an act of war. Sabotage on the Israelite people as a soldier for the Midianite people. Zimri was committing an act of treachery with her. As a prince of Israelites, he was obligated to be a better example, instead of supporting the Midianites. There has to be one. You have heard that Hashem, Moshe, worked the deaths of the leaders of the tribes as expiation for the great sin that was going on. The plague was a punishment from Hashem that would continue until his anger was assuaged. Judgment was already upon the sinners, and immediate action was called for. No delay was intended. Note that this order was made before Pinchas acted. Killings carried out in the direction of one's government are justifiable and not actionable. We send our military men and women in time of war with the admonition to kill the enemy. Soldiers are not told which specific individual they may kill. That is a decision that's made at the moment. There can be no micromanaging under those circumstances. But also that Zimri, a leader of the Simeonites and Cosby, also committed their act of defiance after the order of Moshe was given, in clear defiance of that order. Their last great act of defiance was so awful, Moshe was flabbergasted and didn't even know what to do. They were disrespecting him in the worst way. Action had to be taken immediately to restore order, but not by appeasing the disease. Appeasing. Remember Neville Chamberlain? In the face of evil, he sought to appease for the sake of peace. There is a great fault in the world which fails to respond to evil and inappropriately labels inactivity and the appeasement of evil as love. Yet, how can violence be equated with peacemaking? The history of the world is filled with violence for the sake of peace. The wars of the 20th century, particularly World War II, are prime example. After the incident with the golden calf, Moshe ordered the Levites, and Pinchas was a Levite of the Philistine of the Reincarnate, to slay their brethren that defied Moshe. 3,000 were slain. Was anyone prosecuted? No. Why is the prosecution picking on my poor client? What is his agenda? 
Note the times that Petrus lived in. This was not a democracy, it was a theocracy. The rules are different in such a culture. Remember Nadal and Abihu, as mentioned by Venus. We do not fully understand their transgression, yet it is clear they committed a profane act in the eye of Hashem that were immediately put to death. There was no shrine, only judgment. Incas is not evil, and there was no malice before thought. There is no lame and wait. He responded to the evil presently before him. Pincus was being righteous and holy. He earned God's covenant of peace by restoring the peace between Hashem and the Israelite people. Pincus clearly had the implicit and explicit authority of Moshe and Hashem to carry out the execution of Zimri and Cosby. Pincus understood the nature of the order and carried it out to the best of his ability and understanding. Not for evil purpose, but to save his people and to bring peace between the Israelites and Hashem. He did not hate Zimri. He did not hate Cosby. He did love Hashem. He did love Moshe. And he loved his people. And he acted for them, not for himself. He committed an act of righteousness, of holiness, not murder. And we should thank him.